Hi. Over a course of uh, quite a few videos, I'm going to show you my approach to uh, site modeling using AutoCAD and 3D Studio Max. This is an aerial, uh, a, a tile aerial photograph um, from a company, well, it's, it's through Digimap, and we have access to this material through the, through the university that I work for. Okay, this is the site we're looking at, and um, when you choose a, a portion of, of of aerial imagery, it basically takes the the whole photograph that that site was is on. If your site happened to straddle, uh, it was on the border of two photographs, you'd end up with two, and you'd have to stitch those together using Photoshop. So taking on you know this amount of modelling would be uh, you know a mega task. The model area that we're going to work on is, is big enough anyway, but what I've done is crop this down to the to the area in question, so it's more like this size. So I'll show you the next view. And this is just it cropped to a smaller area, and this is the site. We've got a road coming from a high point down to a low point. Okay, so this is coming from high, meeting this road about halfway down. There's a fairly steep road running up here next into the edge of the site and then it basically levels off down here this is spoil this is a huge mound of uh, temporary spoil heap um, not going to intend modeling that because that should be eventually removed okay so this is the kind of area of interest for this model okay so we'll start off in in AutoCAD <coughs> and I'll show you the material that I've got put together so far Okay, so this, this pulls together three products from the Digimap range. The orange are 3D buildings that are set to their actual uh, correct height on above sea level, and it also averages their the building height. Okay, if I turn this over, I'm having a wee bit of a slug. These these orange buildings are pretty heavy in 3D terms. Okay, we've got this right way around. I think I'm upside down. Yeah, we're upside down there. That's better. Okay. If I turn this over a bit more, you'll be able to see that they kind of follow the contours as well. Okay, so the red lines, these are the contours. These come from the uh, data download portion of Digimap. And then we've got the kind of 2D master map info lying beneath that. So you, know, you can see how it's kind of you know, being a bit unfriendly at the moment, it's kind of pretty sluggish so I'm going to chop this down to the area that we're interested in. So I'm going to go to plan and return twice. Okay, I'm going to freeze the, uh, the buildings just now because they're going to slow me down a bit too much. So let's freeze those off. Okay, I think I'll freeze the contours as well just now just have a few less layers to deal with. And we'll bring in the, the cropped aerial photograph and we're going to use that as a material map in 3D Studio. Okay, so I want to insert and attach. Okay, let's get to the right folder. Okay, so I have my cropped photograph. And open. Now, because these are because these are this material is copyright in you know, an ordnance survey, I'm not going to be able to put things like the aerial photographs onto onto uh, Google Google Drive, uh, etc. So, sorry about that. You just have to kind of watch the the methodology. You know, by all means, you know, substitute things with uh, photography from Google Earth. But bear in mind, Google Earth pictures are projected onto a sphere, so there isn't. They aren't as accurate as something like the get mapping photographs, which are proper aerial photos that are corrected to be flat and square. So I'm going to choose the insertion point and the scale on screen, and OK. And what happened there? Oh, it's gone to zero, zero. All right. Because I took the take off, it meaning I didn't want to choose the uh, the position on screen. OK, 
Okay, so we'll take, try that again. I do want to choose the insertion point, and I do want to choose the scale. Got myself all the way around there. Okay, so I'll click and drag. Okay, now, you know, the, the way this works, this isn't going to automatically size itself to, to what's happening on the uh, on the, the ground here. So we really need to kind of try and get these to correspond scale-wise. And this is quite tricky. Okay, so what I need to do is look for buildings in this part of the plot, in this, in this aerial view, and try and match them up with buildings on the 2D info. So this is quite a strong corner here. So I'm going to mark this with a circle, corner of that building, and I've got another strong building corner up here, okay, and I'm going to mark that with a similar size circle. Okay, so it's pretty rough, it's pretty inaccurate this, but it's close enough for a 3D model. Okay, so now if we need to find those buildings on the, the plan. Okay, so one of them is here, okay, put a circle on there, and the other one is this building, just above the number 10, so I'll put the circle there. Okay, so now I need to try and get correspond these two. Okay, maybe a line between each one would help. So let's just check the object snaps, make sure center's available. Just center will do just now. Okay, so I'm going to put a line between the two just so I can see them a bit clearer, and a line between these two. Okay, then we want this stuff to be in the background. So use the draw order command to push them to the background. So ER, return, grab these four, enter twice. Now move these four from their base point, which will be this building. So this, the center point at that building, we'll place it in the corresponding center point over here. Okay, so you can see that the two lines match up pretty close. I'm not going to adjust the rotation here because it will make things a bit trickier in 3D Studio. Okay, so all I'm going to do is try and scale these relative to each other. So it's scale, so it's SC, return, P for the previous objects, return, return again. So this is needing to be shrunk. Okay, so this circle needs to end up on this circle. So the corresponding point, the base point, is the center here. I need to do a reference scale, I click reference, and go from center to center on the bad size, on the wrong size, and then go to center on the good size. And we should have a pretty close match. Okay, that's not bad. You can see it varies all over the place. You know, but the, the, the photography is probably the more accurate in a way, because the ordnance survey information, the, the line work, is done from old aerial photographs many years ago. Okay, things weren't quite as accurate as they are now. So we can get rid of these circles and then we can move on. So what we're going to do is trim down the the 2D information and the contours and get rid of the 3D buildings that we don't need either because I'm not modeling all this unnecessarily. Okay, so let's draw a rectangle around the photograph. We'll need a few more object snaps now. I won't need center anymore. So let's go for an end point just now. So just a simple rectangle around there. And I'm going to unload the photograph temporarily. So it's image, I am, return. Right click the name of the photograph, unload. Okay. Now what I want to do is just erase and trim everything that's outside that rectangle. So I'll bring back on the contours, may as well trim those at the same time, they are trimmable. So buildings are frozen, but I'll bring back on the two contour layers that I froze. Okay, and once I've done this tidy up, we can erase, we can remove quite a few of those layers as well. So erase, E return, and use blue selection windows. Okay, that way you won't pick any of the lines that do go through the the, the area where it's of interest. Okay, so I'm using blue selection windows, not the crossing ones. Okay, so that's the stuff that's quite far away. 
Okay, now I need to get a bit closer and trim in more detail. So let's trim again. This time I will use crossing windows. Okay, just keep selecting. Okay, and we can get closer and closer each time to get more accurate. Okay, if it doesn't trim, it means that it's it's a whole line and it's untrimmable. Okay, so most of that stuff's gone down there. Got some close-up stuff here. Let's just tidy that up. Some very close-up stuff here. Just over there. Okay, and everything else is for erasing. So I'll take these away. Just remove that as well. Anything that's poking out from the drawing now is basically erasable because it's outside the scope of the model. Okay, now contours wise, this contour is actually at 5 meters as well, so it kind of really means that this whole area of the model is flat. Okay, so I'm just going to take this contour as well, because it's just going to end up generating more and more triangles in 3D Studio. So I'm removing that, and I'm going to take this material as well. Okay, let's have a look at the, the buildings now, see which buildings we can get rid of. Okay, there's lots of those that can go. They're outside the model. Okay, perhaps I'll leave these. These ones very close up, they might be useful. Uh, this one's probably okay to go. Similarly here, you're a bit far away from the, the area of interest. So I'm going to take these and that as well. Okay, so that's the, that's the kind of material tidied up, but it's a long way from zero, zero. And if I draw a line from zero, comma, zero, comma, zero, from 0, 0, 0, and I'm going to take it to the corner of the image there, okay, and if I zoom out, you can see just how far away from 0, 0 we are, okay, because 0, 0 here is at the very tip of the Isles of Scilly, okay, so let's imagine the shape of Britain, okay, so it's Great Britain, mainland Great Britain, it's huge, we're a long way away from that. If I list that line, it's 339 kilometers west, 729 kilometers south. Okay, 3D software doesn't like big numbers like this. So we need to really bring our model back closer to the origin. So switch the image back on. So reload the image using the image command and then move everything from the end point here to the end point here. So we've brought everything closer to zero, zero. If we do a zoom extends now, okay, now we're still working in millimeters here, which is probably a bit big for, for this area of model, so ideally we should scale this down as well. So I'm turning the O snaps off just now, because I don't want to accidentally pick on any specific point, and then this the command is scale, so it's SC, return, grab everything, return, the base point is 0, 0, 0, enter, and the scale factor to go from millimeters to meters is 0 0.001, enter. Zoom extends again, and if we ask it to identify a point, so I'll do ID, and just pick on any point there. Okay, we can see that the coordinates are a much more manageable size now. 76 point, 67 point, and zero. Okay, the numbers are much more you know, kind of in the range of comfort for the software to deal with. Okay, so that takes us to the to the end of the kind of first portion. We've got our info tidied up, ready to start some modeling operations. So we'll stop the video at that one and then we'll pick up again in the next portion.